So this is structural fill. This is crushed basalt. Now I don't know what kind of rock occurs where you live, but around here basalt is what Oregon, this part of Oregon is built on. This is three-quarter minus. It's been crushed to where one of the um, diameters of the piece is three-quarter and it'll fall through a three-quarter inch screen, including the minus. That is everything smaller. Everything bigger than that would shake off. It's nice material. It's got enough size to it to have some structure and some strength when it's compacted. It's got enough fines in it that when you get optimum moisture, see it's almost making a ball right there. That's real close to optimum moisture. It's easy to shovel, it's easy to rake, it's easy to grade. It's good material for something like this. So you may be wondering, why, am I, why did we dig dirt out and now we're putting dirt back? It is so much easier to throw some three-quarter minus in there and grade it to a fairly uniform bottom on a footing than to start with a subgrade and guess at the height of the forms and put it in there and then find out I've got to chisel off some humps of shale. That's no fun at all. Besides that, when this is graded and moistened and compacted, I'll be able to measure pretty accurately the volume of this footing. Not a lot of ups and downs. We'll have a thickness. We'll be able to get a, an average width. We'll know the length, calculate the volume. And then the third piece is, when you're pouring concrete, moisture is going out of the top, especially on a slab. Now, it's not such a big deal on a footing that's 12 inches thick and four feet wide and nobody's gonna see. But part of your calculation about how to understand the timing on your finish and get the right finish you want is how fast the moisture is going out of the bottom of the slab. If you place concrete on substrate that is not uniform, in other words, some of it would be dry clay, some of it would be dry or wet gravel, some, you know, maybe you're pouring on visqueen and no moisture can go out, that all changes the length of time that the moisture is in the mix and, and changes the set time. So the three things, calculate the bottom, the, the volume, compact the base to where it's a nice tight hard subgrade that's not going to compress and and have a uniform set hydration behavior of the, of the concrete once it's in place. So here's how a concrete guy likes to grade gravel. I like a square point shovel because you can either move the material or throw the material. Now a lot of guys use rakes. I've used rakes. There's nothing wrong with a rake. You can use a 2x4, which is the same thing that you rod concrete with, and it's pretty good practice for rotting concrete. You just eyeball one inch below the form. I'm low here already. Let's throw a little material in. This footing is 12 inches thick. I've got a 2x8, which is 7 and, let's say, a half, and a 2x4, which is 3 and, let's say, a half. That's 11 inches. The footing is 12 inches thick. So I can eyeball an inch below the bottom of the 2x4 and know that I'm very close to having the right thickness on my footing. Now it's going to go down a little bit when it's wetted and compacted, but you know, if you're within a little bit, maybe half an inch, the inspector is going to consider that um, to meet the intention and then get the value that the engineer needed. So here's how I like to grade three quarter miles. Now this is not rocket science, is it? But it's like hammering. It's a little harder than it looks. You can use the, the line of the straight edge of your two by four to project a straight or flat or quasi flat grade. It's hard on your pants. But in a lot of ways, it's not as hard as standing up and running a rake or a shovel. And if you let a kid do this for, I don't know, a month or two, he's going to be almost ready to learn how to rod concrete. started this thing for six months. Come on, Honda. See how we do.
That was not staged.